Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm not, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. Let's talk about the Shaq incident. So uh, just to let you know, I was sitting on my couch in Texas. It was a late game. I, I bought the NBA pass, which I haven't bought since, just to watch you play as much as possible. And I remember you had an altercation with Shaq after just a game of just fouls and violence and fouls and violence and eventually came to a head when you and Charles Oakley both hammered him. Actually, Charles hammered him more than you did. Um, yep. well, tell me, uh, <laughs> so what then happens? Why don't you tell people that don't know what happened? What happened? Well, real quick to preface it. No one knew who you were outside of small circles until this uh, this 13 sec 15 <clears throat> 30 seconds happened. This 30 seconds changed your career and your Q score in the basketball world. So tell me tell me about what happened with Shaq. Well, his free throw percentage was less than his field goal percentage. So like I said, at Oakley and our like hack a shack. That's what everybody played back then. It was like hack a shack. So, you know, me being a young player, third year in the league, it's like I got six fouls. I got Charles Oakley's got six. He's got my back. And so late in the game, Shaq goes up. We hammer him. Oakley actually hammers me, that hammer Shaq, with the same, like, floating elbow. And next thing I know, I'm walking away, and I see uh, – I don't feel nothing. I'm just, like, on my left ear. It's kind of go, I'm like, man, Oakley, you got me. And I just slightly turn my head, and I didn't see him. The big old fist came and just literally popped my ear just a little bit because I barely turned. By the time I turned like this, it was like Oakley and Ron Artest. You know, can't forget I had Ron Artest, a little crazy butt on the team. They tackle Shaq, and then the whole bench jumps on top of me, and he's got me by a, my jersey underneath. The teammates pull me by my legs. Next thing I know, jersey rips. I get pulled out of the tunnel, and that's that, you know, and, you know, that kind of – sparked a lot of things because they're like that made big national news of everything Shaq who's fighting at this and you know I got suspended one game which was kind of stupid but I was actually sick so I felt good about it I was like I couldn't play anyways I was physically sick but um I don't know it, it kind of sparked um a different swagger in me too it was like came back like you know Shaq was the biggest baddest dude in the league at the time I mean as a big guy there's nothing bigger than Shaq and so just kind of people are like, oh, you started messing with Shaq. Okay, you know, and then it became, I don't know, it just became a different conference and people knew more about me after that situation. So, you know, my game was getting better at the time too. So I was constantly improving. It's on my third year in the league. So it just kind of, I don't know, but I know my life would have went different if he'd been one inch to the right and squarely hit me in the back of the head. I probably wouldn't be sitting here in the same spot right now would have been retired a long time ago. Yeah, you'd be doing <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, after my third year, it'd been about three years in the NBA and four years in a coma, maybe. <laughs>